Welcome to Population Health, Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health. This is Lecture E. This component, Population Health, discusses the application of informatics and informatics methods in population health management. This unit, Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health, explains the challenges and opportunities of developing predictive analytics for population health. The objective for this lecture is to describe a number of existing programs that are guided by population health analytics. Note that this unit does not explain the details of predictive modeling techniques. Please refer to the dedicated component on data analytics to learn more about predictive modeling and analytics in general. This lecture discusses some of the frontier conceptual developments and practical use cases in population health analytics. This diagram shows the overall steps involved in developing analytics for population health management and risk stratification. As shown in Box 1, the first stage involves the merging of various data sets and developing a centralized or distributed population health data warehouse. The second step, depicted by Box 2, includes various processes to prepare the data for analysis, such as fixing data quality issues, deleting or imputing the missing data, and transforming the data to meet the assumptions of a given analytical approach. The next step contains the development of the modeling and data mining approaches. As depicted in Box 3, this step usually requires a base data set and an outcome data set that would collectively include the dependent and independent variables. As illustrated in Box 4, the next step contains the model's validation and evaluation process. In this phase, the analysts use various statistical and data mining concepts to measure how good the model is in differentiating the outcome variable and how reproducible it is when used on other data sets. As pictured in boxes 5 and 6, a critical step after an acceptable model is developed is to apply it within the context of a population health management workflow. As marked by Circle D, this lecture discusses some use cases of population health analytics. Other phases of the population health analytic process are discussed in other lectures. The future frontiers in population health analytics include conceptual developments, such as using non-claims data sources for analytics, the role of health information exchanges, HIEs, in population health, and potential use of population health analytics for decision support. And actual case studies, where population health analytics have been adopted and integrated on a large scale, such as the Veterans Health Administration and Chesapeake Regional Information System for Our Patients, CRISP, Maryland's Health Information Exchange. This diagram shows the potential data sources that can be incorporated into a population data warehouse, POP, DW. As shown, data sources may include insurance claims, electronic health records, EHRs, mobile health, mHealth platforms, personal health records, PHRs, registries, or lab records. As depicted in this diagram, HIEs can play an important role in population health analytics in addition to providing clinical or traditional public health services. Also as depicted in this diagram, various data sources can be added to the existing data at an HIE to empower the predictive power of population health models such as PHRs, insurance data, pharmacy data, and other administrative data repositories. Population health predictive models and risk scores can potentially also be used in the decision support process. This diagram shows how different data sources and different informatics domains can provide different levels of decision support at the point of care. As depicted, HIEs can provide certain population health risk scores for individual patients at the point of care that can help clinicians to make better judgments. The Veterans Health Administration, or VHA, is one of the largest health systems in the U.S., and provides healthcare services to veterans. Here is some background about VHA's scope of activities. VHA has over 150 medical centers nationwide. 
VHA has more than 1,400 community-based outpatient clinics, community living centers, vet centers, and domiciliary. VHA utilizes services from more than 53,000 independent licensed healthcare practitioners. VHA provides services to more than 8.3 million veterans each year. VHA is distinct from the U.S. Department of Defense military health system. VHA uses Veterans Health Information Systems and Technology Architecture, VISTA, as the underlying EHR system. VHA has a large corporate data warehouse, CDW, and four regional data warehouses, RDW, that are used by VHA's analysts for population health analytics and predictive modeling. VHA provides extensive population health management services to its members. Here are some of the recent population health analytic activities. The Office of Analytics and Business Intelligence, OABI, established a dedicated population health program in 2014. This office has created and maintained a conceptual and pragmatic population health framework. There are multiple ongoing projects in predictive analytics at the VHA. VHA's OABI is actively developing population health models and tools. This office has also undertaken activities to enhance population-wide data systems at the VHA. The developed models include representation of the health of the population at individual and group levels to facilitate program design, implementation, targeting, and strategic planning. VHA's OABI developed a series of high-impact population health models to identify high-risk conditions, such as long-term obesity. Current predictive modeling activities at the VHA include the development of a stable of models that could be run in real time in the future, the development of robust platforms to develop predictive models, the evaluation of thousands of potential predictors, model testing and validation, comparisons of modeling techniques, such as logistic, random forest, and Bayesian models. And finally, developing models that typically have high predictive powers, with usually C statistics of 0.80 to 0.90. The Care Assessment Need, CAN, score is one of the major population health models developed at the VHA. The model utilizes a long list of the available variables captured in the central population-wide data warehouse of the VHA. These variables include demographics, vital signs, utilization rates, chronic illnesses, laboratory and imaging data, pharmacy information, and even textual notes. VHA's CAN model has a high predictive power. As shown by the table, the adjusted R-square of the model for predicting hospitalization and mortality is in the 0.8 to 0.9 range. The diagrams show the one-year expected and observed mortality and hospitalizations. Developing reliable and valid models is a challenge, but making sure that these models are effectively used in the workflow is a more complex challenge. The VHA has effectively rolled out the CAN model, and a large number of users have actively used it to manage the care of the population with the highest risk. The diagram on the left shows the line chart of the CAN model's use in fiscal year 2015. The bar chart on the right shows the number of users per VHA's regional centers. The left diagram shows a line chart of how CAN scores have affected the enrollment of veterans in a telehealth disease management program. As depicted by this line chart, higher CAN scores have resulted in higher enrollments, showing the effectiveness of population health-based decision support. The right diagram depicts a bar chart that shows the same information as the line chart on the left, but categorized around high score populations, over 95, versus lower scores. Current predictive modeling activities at the VHA also include specialized models for Kidney disease, especially the risk of acute kidney injury at admission before and after cardiac catheterization, and the risk of dialysis among patients with chronic kidney disease. 
cardiovascular diseases, such as the risk of stroke with atrial fibrillation and the risk of coronary event or stroke within five years. Infectious diseases, such as the risk of drug-resistant Klebsiella infection with multi-drug resistance organisms such as Acinetobacter, E. coli, Pseudomonas, and Clostridium difficile, and models to predict the response of prostate cancer to chemotherapy. Note that some of these risk models could be considered quasi-population health and clinical care predictive models. The VHA plans to develop the following solutions to remedy the existing issues in population health analytics. Models for specific subgroups, such as populations with serious mental illnesses, subgroups with advanced malignancies, and patients with complex chronic illnesses. More complete display of mental health issues, and expanded use and deployment of population health predictive models in intensive primary care and palliative care. The VHA has planned for multiple future population health predictive modeling projects and is actively collaborating with various academic centers to develop innovative predictive models for population health. One example of these projects is the result of VHA's collaboration with the Johns Hopkins Center for Population Health IT to better predict obesity among the veteran population. This project has resulted in various modeling and data infrastructure outcomes, such as mapping and developing the obesity metadata repository, developing predictive models for body mass index BMI, trajectories, and developing an experimental interactive prototype. This screenshot shows a prototype of a real-time web-based population health analytics platform to analyze the trends of BMI in a given geographical area. The end user will be able to drill down into the overall population and find subgroups of interest in real time. Health information exchanges play a considerable role in utilizing population health predictive models on their centralized data warehouses and then disseminating the results to clinical providers at the point of care. One example is Maryland's HIE, which has extensively incorporated predictive modeling in their network. Chesapeake Regional Information System for Our Patients, or CRISP, is a regional HIE that serves Maryland and the District of Columbia. As shown in the schematic diagram on the right, CRISP receives from and exchanges data to various entities, including health records banks, state and local public health agencies, physicians' practices, radiology centers, medication hubs, laboratories, long-term care facilities, and hospitals. CRISP has a wide network of stakeholders and exchanges data between many entities. As shown in the table, CRISP exchanges data between 48 hospitals and connects more than 143 clinical centers, five radiology centers, and two large labs with a national scope. More than 4 million unique patients have been added to CRISP, thus creating more than 4 million master patient indexes. Around 1,500 patients have decided to opt out of CRISP's data exchange. CRISP receives thousands of queries from clinicians on a monthly basis, making it a suitable central hub to provide overall population health risk scores to clinicians. More than 16 million lab results, 5 million radiology reports, and 2 million clinical documents have been exchanged via CRISP as of 2015. CRISP provides various services to its stakeholders. As depicted in this diagram, there are three main delivery mechanisms for all of these services. These mechanisms include a query portal, where clinicians can request and retrieve patient information collected elsewhere. An encounter notification system, or ENS, that will send a notification or message to a clinician for a given patient if certain conditions become true. And CRISP's reporting system, or CRS, which provides monthly reports to its stakeholders. Note that all three mechanisms are currently or will soon embed population health risk scores. These scores include both scores for individual patients and scores for large subgroups of populations, depending on their use case. For example, when a clinician accesses the query portal to retrieve information collected at other locations for a patient, 
They can also see the risk of a patient for a special outcome, thus enhancing their needed care coordination or case management requirements. Another example is sending a notification to a clinician if the risk score of one of his or her patients passes a certain threshold. Incorporating the risk score of an entire population subgroup into the monthly reports is also planned. This slide shows various services that CRISP provides to its stakeholders. On the left side, the data sources are listed. The middle part shows how data is being processed by CRISP. And the right side of the diagram shows the receivers of various CRISP services. This image shows a screenshot of CRISP's portal to retrieve patient information collected throughout its network. A series of population health risk scores are already incorporated in this portal, and even more risk scores are planned to be integrated. This heat map illustrates the mapping of CRISP's population health risk scores across Maryland's geographical units. As shown on the map, patients residing in certain zip codes of the state have much higher utilization rates, which in this case is hospitalization than other zip codes. These maps are extremely useful in planning for population health interventions on a state or regional level. This heat map illustrates the mapping of CRISP's population health risk scores across the census tracts of Maryland. This risk score uses the hospital visits as the marker of utilization. CRISP's utilization maps can also be drilled down into neighborhood levels. In this map, inpatient utilization rates are depicted based on each neighborhood. Risk scores for future utilization rates will be assigned to each of these centers in the near future. This concludes Lecture E of Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health. This lecture discussed conceptual developments in population health analytics, such as using non-claims data, the role of HIEs in population health, and the potential for population health-based decision support systems, and case studies of existing and developing population health analytics by the Veterans Health Administration and CRISP. Maryland's Health Information Exchange. This concludes Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health. This unit included the following lectures and topics. Lecture A, Challenges of Using Population Health Data. Lecture B, Challenges of Developing Population Health Analytics. Lecture C, Common Approaches for Population Health Analytics. Lecture D, Common Tools for Population Health Data Exploration, Visualization, and Analysis, and Lecture E, The Future Frontiers of Population Health Analytics.